All right, everybody, today is the big day. I've been talking about doing this for a while. I've been working my way up to it. And today is the day we're going to do the big water change here on the Garami tank. Now, I say big water change, and I don't necessarily know how much volume of water I'm going to remove yet, but I am going to remove a lot of that water sprite that's floating in there, and I have to thin out some of my red tiger lotus off to the right. Over here you will see that the red tiger lotus has gotten quite out of control. There's a lot of it all up to the surface and I don't want it on the surface. I want it to be more compact and dense. Uh, I do have some new shoots coming up in the bottom so I can definitely get rid of a lot of this taller stuff that's going all the way up to the surface. Uh, I also want to get in there and thin out this java fern that I've got planted on this piece of wood. There's a great big piece of wood in there. I know it's really dark and hard to see. Um, but this java is just soaking up so much light out of this top corner, it keeps this tank um, perpetually dark down in the bottom. Now, I don't mind it looking this way, but at this point, it's getting really dark. It's almost getting too dark to see. Now, and it also does come out a little darker on film than it does here in real life, but it's still pretty dark. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the amount of wood I have in here. A lot of tannins leach into this. And that is going to be key to how much change it looks once I've finished the water change. Uh, if I am able to do a fairly large water change, we'll knock a lot of those tannins out of there and really lighten the tank up a lot. And if the pH is as low as I expect it to be in this tank, unfortunately I won't be able to do a great big water change. So even though I'll be able to remove a lot of the plants and lighten it up that way, the water itself will still stay fairly tea stained. Uh, and that is mainly what keeps this tank so dark. I get a lot of tannin build up in this tank. Um, having said that, that is one of the reasons why the pH drops so low in this tank. I'm expecting to find it around 6.4 where it normally sits. If that's the case, I'll only be able to do maybe a 20% water change. Uh, my tap water is about 7.2. So I can't do too big of a water change or it'll shift the pH in the tank too much uh, for the fish to be comfortable. So we're going to go ahead and get testing on that, see what we're looking at on the pH. I'll go ahead and test the nitrates as well, although I can already tell you they're going to be um, off the charts. It's just going to be a red vial. Um, now that I've added the neons to this tank, I have approximately 50 fish in this tank. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I really actually do have about 50 fish in this tank if you count all the little neons and otosynclus that are in here. Um, massive, massive bio load in this tank. This is my most heavily stocked tank. It's always bright red, and after we're done the water change, no matter how much I do, it's still going to be a red vial when we're done. So we'll go over and we'll have a look at that, and we'll see what the pH is sitting at. We'll compare it to my tap water, and that will determine how large of a water change we can do. And then we'll come over and we'll get started on doing the water change itself. All right, everybody, everything is sitting about right where I expected it to be. The vial on the far right is pretty obviously the nitrate level that's in the tank currently, bright red as I suspected. The vial to the left of that is the pH that's in the tank currently, and that is 6.4 right where I expected it. Uh, 7.2 is the next vial over. That is my pH in my tap water. I just did a big water change in my African tank about an hour ago, so I was fully aware of what that was going to be. Uh, but for the sake of this video, I ran another test, and there we go, 7.2 on my tap water. So I should be able to do a reasonable uh, water change. I don't want to bring the pH above 6.8, however. I just think that would be too much of a shock. So we're going to keep it at about a 20 to 25% water change as a result of that. And finally here on the left, this vial is actually the nitrates that are in my groundwater right now. I do have a system over here that removes nitrates. Um, this tank right here, uh, the one in the center there, the shorter one, actually removes the nitrates from the groundwater as well as the hardness. Now, I don't have hard water. I have very soft water coming out of the ground, and it's very acidic. So this tank right here on the right is actually filled with uh, medium. It looks a lot like cat litter, and what it does is it hardens the water. I won't go into the details, but it actually brings the pH up to about 7.2. Then it goes through this container here, that second one, the shorter one with the apparatus on the top of it, and that is the actual softening unit and that removes all of the minerals that the first one put in so the pH is stabilized at 7.2 but the hardness is pulled back out 
in there I also have um, the ion exchange resin that draws nitrates out of the water. It's very similar to Purigen or a nitrate removal that you would put in your aquarium. I just have a bucket load of it in there to pull the huge amounts out of my groundwater. So depending on the time of year, I live in a rural farming area and depending on rainfall, whether or not they've been fertilizing, uh, etc., it really does impact my groundwater and the nitrate resin can only do so much for pulling it out of there. So despite the fact that I checked and I am fully charged up with salt, I should uh, be getting no nitrates in my groundwater. I think it's just the time of year there's just so many in there. It's just some are bypassing the system and I'm not going to be able to get them all out. So we're looking at about 15, maybe even up to 20 parts per million uh, nitrates are still in my groundwater. So the significance of the nitrate reduction is going to be even less than I expected so we're definitely going to still have a nice bright red vial when we're done all of this but we're going to go do it anyway and we're going to get a lot of those tannins out of the water and that's going to lighten it up as well as pulling a lot of those plants out so let's go get started all right everybody I was not going to film the process of uh, cleaning the filter out because I've done that more than once you can see other videos of me doing that in fact I'll go ahead and attach a card uh, to this video right here where I just did this recently on my African tank or my 125 rather and I did the whole process and I show you how I break the filter down and take all the trays out etc etc however while I was doing this uh, this is the filter pad that came out of there so you can see uh, it wasn't terribly dirty for being a month or more since the last time I've cleaned it that's what actually came out of the tank this morning the 125 uh, so much, much dirtier than what came out of the Garami tank. However, when I was in there, I discovered, I don't know how well that's coming out. In fact, it's not really coming out at all. If you can see those sort of glistening, sparkly things right there on the edge, those are snail eggs. They're little clusters. There we go. It's a little better look at it. Um, and they're all over this. They're all over the bottom of it. Um, I've pulled maybe three or four dozen snails out already. I've still got a couple over here. Uh, most of them I've already dumped into my snail tank, so I'm really excited. I'm quite happy. I've got a nice breeding population of snails, and every time I clean this filter out now, I'm going to have buttloads of snails to put in my snail tank for my puffer to eat. I can also throw these snails right back into the tank because I've got lots of loaches in that tank, and loaches love snails. In fact, they're specialized snail eaters, and they devour them. So how these got started in my filter, I don't know. I have thrown handfuls of snails in that tank before. Um, you never see a snail anywhere because of the loaches, so apparently some of them made it into the filter and have been breeding in there. I've never seen these before, um, and I haven't thrown snails in that tank in quite a long time, so I don't know how they got in there or when, but I'm very happy they are in there. So I'm going to get on with cleaning this up. We can discuss the snails later. Maybe I'll show you me throwing some snails in at some point or attach a video uh, about that or something, but we will see. So let me get back on with it, and we're going to go over and start cleaning up the plants once I get done with this filter. All right, everybody, I'm about to strap on the head cam and get started with the actual water change, but I wanted to have a look real quick first with this camera where I can actually get in here and show you a little better at what I'm talking about as far as not a lot of light getting through. I've got uh, tiger lotus that's actually growing up out of the surface of the water. I've got java fern that's growing up out of the surface of the water. And it's not a whole lot different if you come down on this end. I can't really open the top up a whole lot because of the light right there. But you can see it's pretty thick and lush and green in there. So I'm going to go ahead and get the hose stuck in there and start draining the water. And as I do that, uh, as I said, I'll go ahead and put my head cam on and we'll do what we can to get some video of me getting in there and cutting some of that stuff out. So sit tight, let me get that all started and we will be right back. Alright everybody, let's get right to it. Uh, I think this is going to be fairly easy in the sense that I can just pull a few huge chunks of water sprite out of here. And that will be a lot of what's in the way. This is a massive wad of this stuff. Well, that opened it up quite a bit. I will get in and actually thin this one out once I switch sides and I can open this up. 
Uh, for now, we're going to get in here and we're going to worry about trying to get some of this cleaned up. So the first thing I can do is start finding a way to get some of this out easily. I don't know how grown into the root it is or how just growing on it it is. It's a nice little chunk of java. And I think we can leave that alone. So these are what's really going to need to come out of here now is all this tiger lotus. I also think I want to get in here today and try to pull a little bit of this filter apart and see if we can't open up the uh, intake tube a little more. I gotta be careful I don't want to cut any of the ones that are shorter. Because I need to keep some of the plant, you know, some of the leaves intact. I don't want to cut all the leaves off. Uh, but ones like this can definitely come out of there. Now the lower you can cut them to the bottom, the better off you are when you're doing this. Uh, the remaining stalk that's, you know, four or five inches long that I'm leaving in there is eventually going to die off um, once I cut the leaves off of it. So that dying stalk accounts for dead vegetation and that dead vegetation accounts for additional bio load. So, you know, you want to cut them down as, as close as you can as the bottom. I'm not too worried about it. just because I've got this tank set up to deal with a very high bio load and a little bit of plants getting broken down and deteriorating while I'm doing this isn't going to be much of an issue for me. So let's see if we can reach this filter head and find out whether or not it's full of stuff. Well, that's completely open and clear so that's not an issue. Of course, getting it back all together blind. Ah, there we go. I was pulling some roots from this up in there, and that might have had something to do with why I wasn't getting the draw that I used to. So that should work out for that. Now let's try to get over here without damaging anything. Now let's start with this one just by cutting some of these huge branches out of my way. This one, as I thought, has got a lot of new growth and babies. So I can really thin this one out quite a bit. And that's what I was expecting to find in there somewhere, was a big pile of cyanobacteria. You see that really, really dark, green, slimy looking stuff right there? That is exactly what that is. That's that green blue-green algae is what it's called but that's actually cyanobacteria and it's not a problem being in the tank it stays fairly well under control but when you get it sitting on top of these plants growing in a mat and it's more or less two inches away from the light source you tend to get some very heavy concentrations of it growing on the surface of the plants so from time to time I will get in there just for that very purpose to thin that out and get you know any chunks of the mats that I see 
in there out because the more you pull that out the less you're going to have in other parts of your tank uh, later on that's a little bit of temple plant that I can put somewhere else and I am tempted to get rid of this altogether but I think I'm going to leave it in there uh, just because the Grammys do like having the overhead floating plants both for the sake of security and it keeps a little bit of dim light on them uh, they don't like the really bright light in their face and it also gives them an additional food source because they nibble on the plants and they nibble on the roots so I can just go ahead and leave some of this stuff in here and it's not a big deal uh, my main concern was getting that huge mass out and thinning out the java over here and then of course I've got a ton of tannins in the tank and as we do the water change I'll get rid of a bunch of those so I'm going to keep going and get this finished up we don't have a whole lot left to do um, just going to drain a little bit more water and wipe the glass down on the inside and we're going to call it good so I'm going to wrap this part of the video up and then we'll just get right to the before and after and we'll have a look at how much of an impact all of this chopping and whacking and draining has made on the tank so sit tight and I'll see you when we're all done all right, and this is pretty much as far as I'm going to go as far as draining the tank. I did get in there and groom a little more of the water sprite. I actually got into where the uh, central branches were and began sort of thinning them out and chopping some stuff out of the middle. And I was able to find a lot more loose debris and eaten, you know, half-eaten plants, uh, things like that floating around in the tank. So I pulled some more of those out. But between the amount of displacement I've got in the bottom of the tank and the amount of water we pulled out of the top, uh, I'm going to put this at pretty close to a 50% water change. Uh, you can see the Grammys are not happy. They're getting a little stressed out by all this activity and everything that's been going on in there. I have already wiped the glass down, so we are just in the process of filling the tank back up. Once I do that, I'll get the filter up and rolling, and we'll do the before and after, and we'll see how it looks. So sit tight, and I'll be right back when we're done. And one final note before we get back to the before and after is the java fern that I pulled out of there. It was one big clump, but when I looked at it more closely, it was actually full of little babies. If you know how uh, java fern propagates, the, the, the leaves will develop little uh, buds, and then they'll grow into little root masses, and then new leaves will start developing off of them, and eventually you'll have a new plant that you can tease off of the existing leaf. So that's what I did, and I got quite a few little baby plants, but the root mass was also big enough that I was able to break that into three or four sections and get some chunks of that as well. So all of those little clumps right there are all usable individual java fern plants, so you can probably expect to be seeing some more java popping up in some of my tanks over the next few days as I find places to put all this stuff. So let's get on with it, and I promise this time we will go do the before and after. Alright everybody, there's your after. So not really a lot to talk about wrapping this one up. You were there for the whole thing, you saw what we did, you saw how much stuff got removed. Uh, I did check the nitrates and the pH after we were done. The pH was just about 7, but I was still within the um, acidic range. I hadn't quite gotten to neutral, and that's the important part. Uh, if you're going to shift the pH a little bit, that's one thing, but you really don't want to cross that line. If you've got fish that are in acidic water, you don't really want to bump them up into alkaline water and vice versa. If you keep fish in uh, alkaline water, even if it's only like 7.5, you really don't want to drop that down into the acidic range, like 6.8 or something. So I did keep them within their comfort zone where they were still in the acidic water. Uh, I was able to bring the nitrates down to just barely in the red, so we are still sitting around 40 parts per million or whatever, and that's fine with me. I'm not worried about that at all. So there you go. There's your final look at the tank. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you're not subscribed already, please go ahead and do so, and I will see you real soon on the next one.